that's a great question. There's a bunch of outdated growth strategies that somebody might be using, like the follow unfollow method, being in engagement groups or engagement pods. Certain giveaway strategies are outdated as well as doing untargeted engagement. Today, I'm very excited to be joined by Millie Adrian. If you don't know who Millie is, you need to know Millie. Millie is an online educator, influencer, coach, and founder of It's Modern Millie, a company that helps aspiring influencers and entrepreneurs grow their income. Her course is called The Modern Influencer, and her YouTube channel is called Modern Millie. Millie, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm cold and I'm hot and it's that time of year, you know, where depending on where you are, it's hot or it's cold and, you know, I'm dealing with all that kind of crazy stuff, but I'm excited to spend some time with you. Today, we're going to explore how to audit your existing activities on YouTube so that you can figure out how to actually improve. And so many of us are doing stuff on Instagram that we've always done. And maybe it's time for us to like step back and take a look and dive into what the latest and greatest stuff is. And that's what I'm excited to talk to you about today. So I guess my first question, Millie, is um, why is it important to take a look at what we're doing on Instagram? Uh, because so many of us <laughs> probably have a million things going on on our plate. And the last thing we want to do is look back at what we've done. But what do you want to say to us as far as why it's really important to kind of maybe step back and take a deeper look at what we're doing? I think in general, it's super important to analyze any strategy that you have within your business, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, marketing, just any strategy should be reevaluated reevaluated every so often, but especially for Instagram, that strategy can be checked month to month or quarterly if you don't have that capacity to check it month to month because the algorithm is changing so frequently and or even the algorithms, I should say plural. And even with all the new features Instagram is releasing week to week, it's important to really continue to test what's working and what doesn't because something that works now maybe won't work next month. So really you want to be analyzing that strategy on a month to month basis. What, um, what are some of the things that maybe you see with your students or your clients that they've been doing for a while, but maybe don't work anymore? I think it's, it's always good to step back and say, all right, if you're doing this, this, or this, uh, maybe you should stop doing it because there's many of us that are probably doing things that we think work, but they don't really work anymore. So what are the what are the things you're noticing that are kind of outdated strategies that a lot of marketers might still be using today? Yeah, there's that's a great question. There's a bunch of outdated growth strategies that somebody might be using, like the follow unfollow method, being in engagement groups or engagement pods. Certain giveaway strategies are outdated as well as doing untargeted engagement and even sticking to your strategy from last year. That's going to be an outdated strategy if you haven't changed your strategy in a year. So all of those things probably shouldn't be doing now. Well, let's dive into a little, a couple of what these are, because maybe some people don't call them what you call them yeah. and they might not know what you mean. So let's start with follow on follow. I think we know what that means, but go ahead and explain that. Just basically the follow on follow method started probably back in 2015 when like the rise of bloggers, travel fashion bloggers started. And this strategy, people noticed anytime you followed an account, that account was more likely to follow you back. So a lot of people would just like spam follow people, hoping they would follow them back. And if they didn't follow them back, they would just unfollow a bunch of accounts. So that's kind of a growth strategy to try to get followers. But it is not a relevant strategy these days. I think I personally think that strategy is more, what's like a nice way to say this? It's not um, the nicest way to grow. I mean, we're all on our Instagram journeys. We're all trying to grow. And if you have a bunch of accounts that are following and unfollowing you just because they want to grow their accounts themselves, it's kind of disrespectful to other creators, other businesses who are really working hard trying to grow. So that's that's what the unfollow message yeah, and is. My guess is some people listening right now have actually got an assistant or an automation tool that actually does this for them. And you're here to say that's not really working anymore. My guess is the algorithms understand this because they track everything, right? And my my guess is 
if you're employing this strategy, you might end up getting uh, your content maybe less seen by people. I don't know. I mean, have you like, like, do you know it doesn't work or have you just kind of heard, do you think, feel like it's a waste of time? Like, why doesn't it work? It seems intellectually that it would work, but you're saying it doesn't. I'm just curious. So that's, that's a good thing to clarify. So it can work. Yes. But it's not the organic way to grow. It's not an authentic way to grow. It's not a genuine strategy to use. It It's kind of wasting your time if you're like having an assistant do this method for you. That assistant could be focusing on a million other things that are ultimately going to be way more helpful and impactful than doing this follow and follow method. So yes, the algorithm can or Instagram can track you if you're doing this in like spam movements you're just following a bunch and unfollowing a bunch you could get a little like red flag on your account where instagram's like hey you're doing too much activity so while it's a strategy that okay yeah it might seem like it works for some accounts it is not the way to go because it is just like a waste of time when you could be doing other things more helpful and then what is an engagement group what is that exactly there's a lot of terms for this one engagement groups pods Pods. yeah yeah all of those basically when you earn like this group message on Instagram with a bunch of other businesses or a bunch of other creators, and you're required to engage with each other's posts on a day-to-day basis. So this is one where Instagram has actually said, if you go to their Instagram creators account, they have like a FAQ highlight. You can tap through that highlight. They have said that they track engagement groups and they don't want to support those. So if they notice somebody in a group or a pod where you're only engaging with the same accounts over and over to try to increase engagement on each other's accounts, they're going to lower your content or lower your reach because they track those things. They want to make sure engagement on Instagram is is authentic and just genuine with other creators as opposed to, oh, we're all trying to boost each other's content for that day. Well, and some people are like, oh, but my group is not on Instagram. It's on Facebook. Well, you could say, well, Facebook owns Instagram or or they could say it's on some other platform. But I would imagine the algorithm is smart enough to notice that um, Jack and Millie, you know, seem to comment on on Jane and George's posts and they seem to comment on each other. It's smart. It knows it uh-huh. knows it's going to figure out your game. Right. So, yeah, don't, don't waste your time is really what I'm hearing you say. Right. And yeah. you know, along these lines, what about like artificial engagement? Like there are some people that have a, le- that they have a strategy where they try to, they try to comment on certain people's posts to try to get their attention, to be able to, fo- to get them to follow them back. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's still a legit strategy? Maybe for someone who's a salesperson, who's intentionally trying to stand out on a couple people's accounts and not necessarily doing it like in a mass kind of a way. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, that kind of falls into like, untargeted engagement versus targeted engagement. So I talked about untargeted engagement being one of the ways that or one of the strategies that's outdated. And that's basically where you just like spam comment on any account and every account. It's not there's no strategy behind it. But if it's targeted, that's different, right? Right. So if you're being super strategic and you know who your target audience is and you're taking time to leave genuine comments on their posts or you're replying to their stories and getting in their inbox instead of like a cold DM. I'm, I don't like doing cold DMs because it feels weird for me personally. Some people, they're bomb at it. Uh, but jumping into the DMs by like replying to their stories and be like, oh my gosh, that latte looks so good. Where'd you get it? You know, so you can do targeted engagement, engaging with your target audience. And that spending time there is going to be so much helpful than just like engaging with anyone and everyone. I think you mentioned giveaways are not necessarily valuable anymore. Talk to me a little bit about what's wrong with that. Yes. So I like to say there's two different types of giveaways. The giveaway that I'm referring to that is the outdated strategy is when a bunch of people come together, they put maybe $20 each into this giveaway and they give away like a $500 gift card. So maybe a bunch of businesses get together, 20 businesses get together, they each pitch in $200, 20 or $20 each, $25 each, whatever. And it's like, oh, we're going to post this. You have to follow each account. And if after you follow each account, comment to win this gift card. That is like the outdated giveaway strategy, mainly because 
a lot of we all know not to buy followers, right? And everybody knows, okay, we can't buy followers. People can tell when they're authentic or not. And buying into a giveaway is ultimately the same thing as buying followers. You're just buying you're a the wrong audience, right? You're probably attracting people that want freebies. You're not attracting legitimate people that are going to want to buy your products and services, right? Yeah. And that's a hard pill for some people to swallow. No, nobody wants to hear this part of the giveaway thing is like, nobody cares about you when they follow you. They don't care about you. They don't care about your business. They just want the free thing that you're offering. They're going to follow you. And then after they follow you, what's going to happen is either they unfollow you right away because they didn't win this prize. And all of a sudden your follows drop and you go into this like anxiety, <laughs> sad stage, or they stay around because they forget to unfollow you making your engagement tank because they're not engaging with your content since they never cared about your content in the first place. So it's like a lose, lose this type of giveaway. Hopefully someone who's listening to this, maybe you who are listening or watching this right now are saying, Oh yeah, I know somebody who does this kind of stuff, or maybe it's even you. And maybe you can go to them and say, Hey, guess what boss or client? Maybe we ought to consider trying something new. So let's assume we're not doing any of these things. Um, but it's been a while since we've taken a look at our account, our profile on Instagram, you know, um, let's just start with that. Like, what can we do? Cause it seems like the profile is one of the last things we think about, right? Like we, we think about what we post probably a lot more than we think about what happens when people see our posts and they go to check us out. Right. So how yeah. can we maybe update our Instagram profile to bring it up to modern era, if you will? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought this up because this is a common complaint that I get with some students or some followers is they'll be like, Millie, I had this real blow up. It is, it's gone viral and I didn't get any followers. Like what the heck happened? And it's because they were so focused on creating content that they forgot about their profile. What does their profile look like? How is their current conversion rate of their profile? So when people land on your profile, what's the conversion rate of people actually pressing that follow button based off of how it's currently set up? So how you set up your account is probably just as important as the type of content you create. When you do set up your account, some things to look for is making sure you have a clear call to action in your bio leading to a lead magnet. That's something that a lot of people leave out. Ultimately, we don't have control over the Instagram algorithm, but we do have control over our email lists. So even if you're starting from zero, priority number one, have some sort of lead magnet and direct people to that to get them on your email list. Let me, also, pause, you, let me pause you real quick right there. Yeah. So I got a couple clarifying questions. Okay. So obviously, most people already have an Instagram account, right? So when we say set it up, we really mean like revisit it, right? And edit it. Mm -hmm. uh, so the conversion rate, you mentioned conversion rate of your profile. Like most people are like, how do I even, what, uh, how do I measure that? Like, let's just start there. Like, what are we, what are we measuring exactly? And where do we find this data for our conversion rate of our profile? Yeah. So if you go to your Instagram analytics right now and you look at your number of profile visits over the past, maybe 28 days versus the amount of follows over the past 28 days. That's how you could find the percentage of, okay, how many people who visit your profile are following you? And of course, the profile visits, that number is going to vary because some might be people who already follow you, but that's the closest we have to analyze and figure out what that conversion rate is. And from your opinion, have and I know it's variable depending on what kind of an account you have, but what are the kind of the ranges of high and low for conversion rates, meaning the visits to follow uh, ratio on an Instagram account from your opinion? Yeah. So the more followers you have, the lower that conversion rate is going to be naturally. So if somebody who has like 100,000 followers, their conversion rate might be lower than somebody who has under 10K followers. So I try to tell people to shoot for a 10% conversion rate. And if you are starting out and you don't have that 10% conversion rate, ask yourself, okay, what can I change with my how my current profile looks before like the type of content that I'm creating? How does my profile look? What do I need to change to get people to press the follow button and then focus on the content? Well, and the analytical side of me says, hey, you know what? If you can take your last what is it, 28 days or 30 days? How, what's the range, the default? 28 is like, I think what Instagram So if you studies. look at the last 28 and that's your number, right? You want to you wanna grow it. 
Maybe you just agree to come increase that by 10%. So let's say it's 5%. Increasing that by 10% would be a 1% growth, right? Because it's 10% of five is, I think if I'm doing it right, no, it might be five and a half percent growth. So maybe you just, just try to beat yourself right in the beginning, probably, right? And then I would imagine mm -hmm. by making some of the changes we're talking about, you could actually increase the likelihood that you get more of these followers, right? And that's yeah. kind of exciting. So you talked about creating a, um, a lead magnet. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, depending on what their business is about and what their account is about, might just send people over to their website or they might send them through a link tree kind of account where they have 10,000 different things in there. So tell me a little bit about the lead magnet concept and, and whether we should have just one single thing in there, depending on like, let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that's kind of a fascinating concept. Yeah. So I feel like the answer here might vary depending on who you ask. But for me, what I'm teaching, I have a link and bio platform that I use and I try to have maybe like five buttons maximum for people to choose from, like five max. The fewer options you have, the better, because it's going to be easy for people to be like, oh, one, two, three, let's do two. And it, it it just increases those conversions of people actually clicking those buttons, whether they go to your website or your freebie or lead magnet. Okay. So five max, but do you use some of your description in your bio to actually um, encourage them to find a specific offer or do you let, yeah. that, or do you let the link be generic? Talk to me a little bit about that. Yes. So my bio is crafted and how I tell everybody to craft their bio. First things first, don't talk about yourself in your bio. <laughs> you you want to tell them the value that they will get from pressing follow. So instead of me being like, I'm Millie, I'm in a social media coach and I love long walks on the beach. You know, I say how to grow on Instagram with through authentic growth strategies like that tells them okay if i press follow this is what i'm getting so that's the first thing and then i do the call to action leading people to my link and bio so, so i say here's a free training this is your 100 day instagram roadmap and then they click the link and bio the very first button up top is register now for your 100 day instagram roadmap so that's how i lay everything out I, I like this and I want to dissect this a little bit. So first of all, the first thing you say in your bio isn't like the founder of It's Modern Millie. You, stay, you say instead, um, and it might might vary depending on if you work for a business that's well known or something, right? Um, but, right. But in your particular case, you're, but it sounds like actually you would advocate probably this in, in, in almost all situations, right? Um, um learn how to blink right in your case learn how to improve your instagram sales conversions for example hypothetically right yeah do you say follow me to learn i mean do you do you actually want to say that or do you encourage not even to waste any words on that no i don't because we have like that character limit in the bio so i'll say who i'm trying to target and what they're going to gain so teaching influencers or teaching content creators how to grow on instagram for real like how to actually grow on instagram that's what i say and how many characters do you know off the top of your head you get on instagram 300 like, i can check oh really you get that many that's quite a bit okay Let's see. well and that's that's interesting so you actually first make a claim this is what you will learn if you follow me and then you have this second part of this which is kind of like uh, here's a here's something for you to go deeper right? And that's, yeah. do you use emojis to separate out these two things or do you just write it all out as like one long string of text or how do you do that? I do have emojis. I think they help through almost like visual storytelling. Like some people, they prefer um, picture books, you know? So I have maybe two emojis in my bio. I try not to overdo it with like a million or five. I just like have two that make sense with what I'm saying. So if I'm saying how to grow on Instagram, I'll use the little graph emoji with the arrow going up or I'll use the phone emoji. I want it to be relevant to what I'm saying and not distract from what I'm saying. You know, and I, I'm literally pulling up Instagram while we're talking right here. Just to look at my profile. Um, so it looks like you have about three or four lines of text according to what I have on mine, right? I say founder and CEO of Social Media Examiner and host of, I just, 
I throw my credentials out there, which probably isn't what I should be doing, but I'm not using Instagram the right way. I mean, let's just admit that I am not good on Instagram. Um, the, the photograph, do you have any tips on the picture of you? Um, should it just be the good old fashioned headshot? Um, I know you don't have a lot of real estate in there. Um, but any thoughts on, on that and maybe even the highlights that are down below. Should we talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit too? Yeah. With my profile photo, avatar, header image, whatever you want to call it, I try to have a good headshot and I try, try to tell people like have a good headshot where it's waist up, you're looking, making eye contact to the camera, smiling. And on top of that, having it be make sense with your business or your industry. So if you're in the real estate industry, obviously a more professional headshot might make sense. Maybe something outdoors or in front of a house, right? So setting up, having that setting be part of the storytelling. And even for businesses where you're like, well, I don't really have a face to my business. Like I have this logo. I still encourage people to create a face for your business because a lot of people right now, they're craving authenticity and it's so much easier to connect with a human being and a person than it is to connect with a logo. Underneath the uh, name, in my case, it says entrepreneur. I don't know what those mm -hmm. labels are called, but do you have to have a certain kind of account and do you recommend putting that label under the name to somehow identify what you're all about? Do you understand what I'm asking? Right. There's different labels depending on what kind of account you have. So if anybody's like, wait, what are you talking about? So when you're looking at Instagram, you have the profile photo. Under your profile photo, there's the name that you actually put into Instagram. This is the bold part. Mine says Millie, influencer coach. I gave ah, myself so that you, title. You add stuff into your name then. So that's, that, that's more descriptive for you. That's fascinating. Okay. Yeah. So that bold part is the most search engine friendly on Instagram right now. Okay. So if you want to be discovered, you're putting in keywords into the bold part. Okay. But right underneath that is this label, right? What is that thing called? I mean, do you have to have a creator account to be able to have that? Or do you know how that works? Yeah. So then under that, there's like that lighter font and yeah. that's the label. There's different labels depending if you're a creator or a business account. So each account has different types of labels. For creators, you might get labels like artist, entrepreneur, blogger, right? You'll get those kind of labels. For the business accounts, it's more business type labels. Um, some of them do overlap. They do help categorize your account uh, in a like a overall point of view for Instagram, knowing who to push your content to. But there's not too much of a strategic element there. Um, I want to talk about stories a little bit. Uh, some people are super good at it, like you are, Millie. I think if I'm not mistaken, you're probably posting stories almost every day. Um, is that advantageous do, when people do come to your account through a reel or through some other way? Uh, do they tend to click on the face and watch the stories of the day? Or is it more the highlights that you think are more important, which are which is below the bio? Ooh, I mean, it's hard to compare. Or are they all important? Importance I mean, between yeah. stories and highlights. It's like apples and oranges. Yeah. I do think if you are posting to your stories consistently and a new follower or new person comes to your profile, seeing that like rainbow pinkish bubble is so enticing. It's like clearing a notification when you get a notification on your phone. Sometimes you just click it to clear it. Same thing when somebody new lands on your profile. If you have an active story or that bubble there, they're going to click on it naturally. So that's kind of how I see people new converting to stories. Do you want me to go more into stories or talk about well, highlights? I, I want to talk about highlights because I feel like that could be a really strategic thing. Like talk to me a little bit about how we could strategically use highlights. Cause I would think people would go right to highlights when they click on your bio, especially if there's no stories, right? Right. I, love highlights. I feel like they're so underused and not taken advantage of. So when somebody is, when I'm auditing a, an account and I do the profile thing, like we did the bold part, the bio, the link, like I'll go down, I look at highlights next. And depending on how your business is structured or what your goals are with your Instagram page, that'll definitely 
change the type of highlights you have. I love having highlights that are kind of categorized by my goals or content pillars. For example, I have seven freebies on my website and people People aren't going to go to my website to go find these freebies. So I have a highlight that says free gifts. And so they click on that highlight and they could, there's a link because everybody has access to the link sticker now. And so every slide they tap through, there's a link to that free offer. Oh, I love that. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah. And same thing for if you're selling products, having a highlight that says products and then listing each of your products or doing screenshots of what it looks like on your bio with the link, directing people to buy that product or your affiliate links, your tools, categorizing it. So it's so much easier to people for people to find that content instead of going to your website, just have it organized there. Okay. This is a big deal. And some people, this is for some people listening, this is like the biggest aha moment for them because (laughs) let's say you've got a launch coming up for a conference or a product or a course or whatever, right? You could intentionally create a bunch of stories with the understanding that you're going to save them into uh, a highlights, whatever they call that. What do they call it? A highlight, just a highlight. Yeah. yeah. Highlights. But when you save them, it, it, but if you, when you l- use the link sticker and it's, it, that's the key thing, right? Like you can, this gives you more ways for people to essentially get outside of just the bio link, right? It gives them more ways to get to all the things that you have to offer. Mm-hmm. So, when you're moving something into the highlights, you have to be careful about the order in which you move them in in order for it to be. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. So all highlights are made up of stories that have been posted before. So you can't just upload something from your camera roll directly to a highlight. It has to come from your stories and it has to be posted in order chronologically of how you want it to appear in your highlights. You can't rearrange the order after. Does this mean first in always stays first in or does it become the second in once you post another one? Do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, it's 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 chronological. So if I post at 2 p.m. and then the next slide was at 2.02, 2.05, and then I save those to my highlights, it's going to put it in order of the time that I uploaded it. So the first one was at 2.02. That'll be the first slide in my highlight or 2 o'clock. And then 2.02, that'll be the next one. 2.05, that'll be the next one. So it, goes off of the time you uploaded it to your stories. Can you go back and go back and use old stories that are in your archives and get them into highlights? And if you do, do you have to be careful about what order you add them in or does it always go in date order? Do you understand what I'm asking? Yes, it always goes in date order. You can add highlights from old, old stories so long as you have your story archive on. So some people might not even have their story archive on, so it's not saving. But if you have story archive, flipped on and you want to go back to like six months ago and you're like, oh, this would make sense in a product highlight. So you add it to the product highlight. It's going to have the one from six months ago be the first thing people see in your slide because it was uploaded first to your stories long, long time ago. However, if you added one that's like two months ago, it's going to go above the one from six months ago in the highlights. Is that right? Do you understand? No, it always stays. It's whatever order you add them in. Yeah, always chronological of the time it was uploaded. Right. But let me clarify. So, so let's say that I have one post, one story I did yesterday, one I did a week ago and one I did two weeks ago. And let's say I start by taking the one two weeks ago and add it into my highlights reel. Okay. Then I take the one I did from yesterday and add it into my highlights reel. Mm -hmm. Which one's going to be the first thing they see in the highlights reel? The one, the most recent one, two weeks ago one. Oh, so it's, it's whatever order you add them into the highlights reel. Is that what you're saying? And the highlights, not real, the highlights, whatever you call the highlights. Your stories. So if you had one from today, one from a week ago, one from two weeks ago that were just like in your archive, somewhere in your archive, and then you want to add them to your stories. So you add the one from today first, and then you add the one from two weeks ago, and then you add the one from one week ago. Instagram's still going to rearrange it and say, nope, the order is two weeks ago because that's the oldest, ah, one week ago because that's okay. the oldest, Got it. and a day ago. So that's that was the, the part order I wanted clarity on. Yeah. So it's always based on when it was actually filmed, basically. Yes. The oldest will always be first. Yes. That what I'm hearing you say, okay, good. That's really important to understand. Okay. I apologize for the confusion, but I <laughs> if I was confused, maybe some other people were confused. Now, if, if you want to strategically create stories for highlights, mm-hmm. uh, is there anything in particular we need to be thinking about? I would imagine putting the link in the stories is the key thing, right? And do you want to put that 
it the first story, every story, the last in 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 the highlights? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. So usually for at least like the one that I have that says free gifts, when you click on free gifts, the first thing is me and my face. And I explain this is da 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 da. I'm going to go over. Here's the seven free products that I have to offer for you or like seven free gifts that I have for you. Tap ahead to see all of the goodness. Right. So then somebody taps and then it's not me anymore. It's a screenshot of what that freebie looks like, the value that they get if they download it with the link. So just visually on your phone, the screenshot with the link explaining the value. Next slide. Screenshot with the link explaining the value. Next slide. And that's how I have it set up. Can you put some sort of a custom thumbnail on these highlights or is it just you can? Okay. Yeah. Any thoughts on how we ought to maybe think about this? Yeah. I like to have my highlight covers be part of my brand colors or business colors, mainly because if you're just like keeping random covers from different parts of your videos and it's like one's your head and then one's a screenshot and then one's like this weird link, like it kind of looks messy and it gets confusing for people to digest when they first land on your page. So if it's just nice and clean, you could do colors or you can make a, make them in Canva and do different images so maybe one is about free gifts so you make go to canva and you add a little gift logo and you make that the cover image um cover images are the only thing this is really cool that you don't have to upload as a story so you can edit highlight cover images without uploading it to stories but generally you don't recommend putting words in there i would imagine it's mostly images is that the idea because it's so tiny yeah either just a simple color or a a image that explains what that highlights about what about titling the actual highlight do you have any tips on that because i think you only get a very small amount of characters don't you before it's like dot 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 right yeah i try to just keep it one word one word okay cool uh back to the lead magnets just out of curiosity how successful could you be getting someone to your profile and ultimately clicking on your link in bio or clicking on your highlights and ultimately going to your lead magnet i mean it seems to me that instagram historically has been built to keep you on the platform right mm -hmm. even though now that stories link thing that we just talked about is available to everyone it it i'm just curious like is it still safe to assume most people are never going to actually go off of instagram or is it actually can it be quite successful to generate leads emails dot 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 what are your thoughts on that yeah, I think it can be really successful so long as your strategy that's in place is very intentional. Like you're speaking directly to your target audience. You know exactly what they want and what they're dying for. I get a lot of people joining my free webinar on a day-to-day -day basis and I'm not running ads telling people, hey, join this webinar. I only link the webinar in my link in bio on Instagram and in my YouTube descriptions. So Instagram is kind of creating this evergreen traffic for me because I know what my target audience wants and needs and I'm giving it to them for free. So if you have that enticing offer where you know exactly what your audience needs, that conversion will come really naturally. Something else that helps, which is like, we can talk about like what's working is the those DM automation tools. Using DM automations help me with those funnels. Yeah, I want to come back to that. Uh, just one quick question. Instagram seems to be moving towards reels now a lot more, obviously, than they were before. And it seems to be like the predominant thing, which is video, short form, you know, vertical video. Do you find that one of the best ways to get people to your Instagram profile these days is with reels because there's so much reach potential with reels outside of your existing audience? Yes. If your goal is to reach new eyes, reels is going to be the way to go. That's just how their algorithm is explained with reels there's an instagram post if anybody wants to or a blog post that if anybody wants to read about it it's called how the algorithm works literally just go to google type in how the instagram algorithm works there's a blog post from instagram themselves explaining the algorithm and they tell you that reels was designed to reach new eyes so if your goal is to reach new people reels should be your strategy if your goal is to reach your current audience you don't have to create reels do you ever recommend in your reels saying there's more of where that count came from 
check out my bio? Like, do you ever recommend or even writing the text on the screen? Uh, in yeah, your- every reel I have, I try to have some sort of call to action, especially if it's like a talking head video where I'm educating. Sometimes those trends, I do those trends so fast, I forget to do those call to actions. But you want to have those call to actions at the end where you're like, okay, for more tips, give me a follow. Or if you want more information on this product, insert product name here, comment the word, give me now, <laughs> the phrase give me now in the comments, and then set up those automations so that they're getting links to all the proper things. So having some sort of call to action is huge. Okay. Well, that's a perfect setup for what's working these days. And you mentioned automation. So talk to me a little bit about how you're doing, what you're doing. You just mentioned one of them, which is um, really cool. And I'm assuming you're using something like ManyChat, but talk a little bit about how this works because some people are like, what? Like I have (laughs) people doing this with the comments and how does that all work? Maybe you can explain that a little bit. So yes, I am using ManyChat. My team and I are using that. I was somebody that I refused to set up bot automation or like, yeah, DM automation because I was like, no, the Instagram algorithm is going to hate me. They hate bots, blah, blah, blah. But as my profile grew and the more DMs that I got asking for certain links to things and all that stuff, I was like, Okay, we're going to need DM automation for a few things. And it's actually been really cool to see the conversion. So for each of my freebies, like I said, we have seven. Each of my freebies, we have a specific word. So if somebody DMs me that word, they will get that link sent to them right away. So they can download the freebie basically within it staying in the Instagram app. So they just go to the link, enter their email address, and then boom, the freebies on their way. They close they like close the little pop up and they're still on Instagram. So DM automation has been huge for getting people onto my email list. And once they're on my email list, we have backend funnels that they're going to be now going through. Well, and talk about the uh, chat automation as well, because you, you were just mentioning something that didn't involve DMs. Presumably it was a reel where you can leave a comment and somehow this is monitoring the comments. Maybe explain how that works because My gut would tell me the algorithm would punish you if it sees a bunch of the same comments in there, but that's not been the truth for you, huh? At least not from what we've we've tested out. We've had maybe three reels where we used the DM, the word blah, blah, blah for this. So basically how this works on ManyChat will have a specific phrase. So I did a collaboration, let's say notch, right? And at the end of the video, in the reel, I say, comment the word notch to get DM'd the link so you could set up a quote, whatever. So anybody who comments the word notch, then I, this bot DMs them the link with the pre-written message like, hey, here's the link for blah, 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 blah. So we do get a lot of comments with the same words, but I find that helps with like more comments, more engagement, we're replying to those comments with different things. So we're not saying thanks, thanks, thanks all the time. We're changing up how we're replying. So it has the variety of comments within there. The only thing with the like reels, de- reels comments automation is that has to be set up after a reel goes up. So with the DMs, that's kind of like an evergreen. You can have keywords in the system ready for funnels. But when you upload a reel, you have to go right into ManyChat, set up the automation, choose the reel that the word is going to work on. It's not just like, hey, this one word, anytime anybody ever comments it, you have to like set it up specifically for the content that you made. Is it smart enough to know if you said, I want notch versus notch, that it's the same thing? Will it look for the word notch inside? Or does it just have to be the word notch? Is it that smart? I mean, I'm just, you know, you know what I'm saying with many chat? Yeah. Um, I haven't noticed any. Uh, I guess this has probably got logic that says contains notch equals notch. I'm sure it's like your typical kind of Boolean logic kind of stuff. Yeah. So beyond the DMs and the automation, what else is working now for you? Because I know there's a lot more stuff that's working for you that we haven't even broached yet. Mm -hmm. So we have DM automations, highlights, being strategic with highlights, testing different content types. This kind of like brings us to the very first thing we were talking about, how it's important to restudy your Instagram strategy. Because what's really interesting for me right now is that my Instagram photos are actually performing better 
then the educational graphic carousels, which those used to like pop off for me. And all of a sudden, like when reels came out, photos tanked, but now all of a sudden my photos are doing better. So continuing to test different content types, even when you feel like you have it figured out, that is work like changing up the type of content you're posting works like a charm. So what are you measuring? Are you measuring what's the metric you're looking for when you're comparing like a photo post versus a carousel post? That's going to vary depending on somebody's goals. So if somebody wants to increase reach and grow followers, they're probably going to want to look to see which posts had the most shares because it's reaching new people and which posts have the most reach. So that's probably what you're going to look for there. For me, I'm not thinking about growth. I just want to engage my community. So what I'm looking for is depending on which account you have, the analytic will say engagement or post interactions. So just the overall engagement of that post and how it's performing. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating. I think it intuitively makes sense that these carousels would degrade over time because they're work to, to move through them. You know what I mean? Like if the first mm -hmm. frame in the carousel doesn't capture you, no one's going to go all the way to the end of the darn thing because yeah. you, you got to slide to the side and everybody wants to slide down, right? So it kind of makes sense that photographs would be easy. And are you also experimenting with caption length and caption stories versus, I don't know, just stuff inside of the captions? Not often. I know my audience likes long form captions. Like they actually read the captions. I even did a test because I saw somebody was saying, nobody reads captions. Who cares about captions? Don't use like just the first line. So I was like, okay, I want to test this. I did just like a generic first line, wrote kind of a novel of like unrelated something. And at that very bottom, I said, this was a test. If you read this far, comment the phrase, love you, Millie, or something. And so many people commented the secret phrase. And I was like, people are actually reading for me, my captions. So it's going to vary per account, like every strategy and everything will. But for my audience, they love the long form caption. Millie, this has been super, super helpful. And I know I've asked a million questions and it's pretty obvious to you and probably everyone who's listening that I am a complete noob when it comes to Instagram. <laughs> but um, it is also hopeful that some that are listening have discovered some new things and there's so much more where that came from. You've got an incredible YouTube channel. You've got uh, the Instagram account and a lot of other stuff that's going on. So if people want to follow you, what's your preferred social channel? And then if people want to go check out whatever you have to offer. Do you have a place you want to send them? Yeah. So if you're looking for more educational type content and you're like, wow, this podcast was so good. I'd love to learn more about Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, anything social media. My YouTube is my main platform where I teach. So that channel is Modern Millie. And if you just want to hang out with me, see behind the scenes of my business, I'm on Instagram and TikTok. The handle is at It's Modern Millie. Millie. Adrian, thank you so much for coming back on the show and sharing your wisdom with us. We're way better because of it. Thank you again. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me.